G'day punters, this is all about the Victron Smart Shot that I've got. I'm going to shove it in down there. I'm going to mount it up on the auxiliary battery box. I'll have to take the spare battery up. An old shunt's down there from the old BM1. This negative cable goes across that shunt. Uh, the old shunt broke in half, so I've got all the negative uh, earthing wires for all the accessories on the same pole including this one so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to split this earth cable in half probably down here somewhere I'm then going to solder uh, the new halves into these lugs which I've already uh, pre-soldered up you see a little bit of solder in there and they go on the terminals of the shunt. Now this is the 500 amp um, IP65 I think it is. Yeah, IP65 rated so it's water resistant um, smart shunt uh, by Victron. Uh, this is a bracket that I've started making up. This part's gonna this part's gonna mount on the inside of the box like that and the shunt's gonna sit on top with the loom that way. Now the loom doesn't come this way. Uh, I've also bought a uh, temperature sensor feed as well. It's got a um, thermistor in it and it measures the um, heat. Um, you have to split off, see this little um, red and grey wire in here? You have to um, solder the temperature sensor to those two things. I've trimmed it up a little bit and um, the existing wires, the red one had a um, fuse in it. Uh, the grey one didn't have a fuse in it but the the Mr one which has got a black wire up here did have a fuse in it both one amp so I've kept that in the circuit as well. This other wire you see up here is for um, a connection to a display. It's pretty simple as I've mentioned. That goes to uh, battery positive. Um, I'll see you here it says battery minus so that side goes to the battery negative and all the loads to here in my circumstance I've got a, an existing shunt well just a pole really further down and the existing earth cable I'm just going to connect it up to there so I'll have from all my loads to here and from here across the battery cost of the Victron shunt I got this from Springer's uh, solar down at near Brendale I think it's Launton it was about 230 odd bucks I think it was about the cheapest I could find because I collected it so there was no postage. I think there might be postage free at the moment. The battery sensor, I bought that locally and I think that cost about, I don't know, 50 bucks. Might be able to find it cheaper on the net. I'll bring you back when I pull the battery out and we'll have a look. I've had to take a little break. Yeah, the rain stopped. Um, Got to mention that look the only um thing i think is troubling about this setup with the victron smart shunt and using the temperature sensor even though without the temperature sensor it still had an m10 hole it's got an m10 hole on the lug i think most batteries if you like mine which is an agm um, will have an m8 i think so it's going to be a little bit loose on the terminal so it'll be nice to be um, a little bit more flexible with the lug on the end there. Radio, got the battery out. Shunt in there. See, I've mounted it up on the the battery box. That's the shunt wiring. That goes to positive, as I mentioned. Battery negative. I've got to cut that. That's going to be cut. I don't know. Probably around about here, I reckon. Solder a terminal onto that. Put it on that post. Solar terminal on that, put it on that post, put the battery back in, job's done. There's my two negative terminal lugs soldered on. This one's got the heat shrink on, the other one hasn't yet. Missed a little bit of wire there, you can see that. I'll just have to trim that up. Then um, pull the heat shrink up. Better show you what this Victron Connect app is. It's that little blue one right there. I'll open her up. I don't have my um, inverter on so it won't show. But you see it's trying to connect to the shunt there it is in 
when you first set this up, there's a whole bunch of parameters you need to go through, like the battery capacity and stuff like that. It doesn't ask what type of battery it is. There's a bunch of displays as well that you can choose. Um, miscellaneous settings and this battery monitor, which I've got up at the moment. What I had before was DC energy meter. So you need the battery monitor. And the auxiliary input is the temperature gauge, which I've got. I've gone through and set up the alarms. I don't have a VE smart network, so I'm not going to worry about that. Still trying to work out state of charge at the moment, but it goes through current battery voltage, current draw, power being drawn out. As I say, it's still trying to work it out. Battery temperature 36 degrees. There is a way in the settings where you can set the state of charge to 100% or default 100%. Um, I'm not going to do that because the battery's not at 100% at the moment. Um, on our trip next week, probably uh, after the first day, I'll probably do, if it hasn't come up by then, hopefully it will, I'll set it at 100% at that stage. So just a trick, um, make sure you select the correct display that you want to use